Okay, Ali. Okay, thank you, Mrs. Anderson. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to the September meeting of the Angus Lysing Board, another remote one um, that we're getting used to now. Mrs. Anderson, are there any apologies for absence, please? Yes, convener, there's apologies from Councillor Nicholl. Okay, thank you very much. Agenda item number two is decl declarations of interest. I have one, and it's relating to agenda item number 5B, the 10 Cafe Bar in Forfar. I occasionally frequent these premises. However, I have no financial interest, and I will remain in the chair dur during consideration of this mm -hmm. item. Is there anyone else? Convener. Councillor Fairweather. Sorry, I can't seem to find uh, the hand button on my machine today, but never mind. Uh, ditto as what you have just said, uh, uh, Chair, and also number four, um, Treasures Tea Room and Boutique. They did contact me um, uh, by phone, but I just passed them on to officers, so um, I, I will be taking part. Okay, Mrs. Anderson, that goes for me as well. I have had a couple of emails from Treasures Boutique and Tea Room, but I just passed them to Mr. Coleman, I think it was. Okay, members, agenda item number three is the minutes of the previous meeting of this board. We are asked to approve as a correct record the me meeting of this board held on the 13th of August. Is that agreed? Thank you. Thank you. The first item of business is agenda item four, new premises licenses under the Licensing Scotland Act 2005. And the first one is Rottle Steading, Rottle Glen Clover. And I believe we have Louise Smalls going to speak to this. If Louise Smalls like yep. to... Okay, Louise, the, the floor, the, the floor, the screen, I should say, is yours. Um, if you just want to speak to your application, and then there might be some questions from members. Um, oh, okay, um, I wasn't, I, I didn't know I had to say anything. Um, but uh, yeah, so um, I'm representing the licensee, which is D Ward, who is the, the owner of Rottle Estate. Uh, and the steadings, um, but I am the, the wedding and events coordinator here and have my own personal license, so um, we'll be, you know, running events um, where alcohol is provided. Um, the venue's been here for several years, but it's not been promoted as a, it, it, it's not really had a business focus, um, but that's what I'm here to do. So um, we've decided to apply for the premises license because we're finding that we're doing more events um, and will likely breach the, the 12 um, annual occasional license um, application limit. Um, and uh, so we've applied for the premises license and I have to thank various people at Angus Council for helping us through the process. Um, it seems very simple to us. We have a, a, a room, a steading, um, you know, that we want people to, you know, have a, a celebration in, mainly weddings, um, and we have uh, a bar and can sell alcohol at a reasonable price. <clears throat> Um, but I appreciate that there's a lot more to it. So we've worked our way through that and um, we've made, we've agreed various concessions about the capacity and such like um, that we'll probably look um, in next year um, to maybe address to um, put in toilet facilities to increase the capacity, that kind of thing. Okay. Thank you very much. Members, any questions? No. Comments? Mr. Coleman, do you wish to comment on your very comprehensive report mm. as usual? Uh, nothing you'd to add, Mr. Convener. I'm, um, I have no concerns about this application. Okay. Well, for the, the minute, members, we'll just go through it. We've got the um, application in front of us. Um, description of premises. Do we agree that? Agreed. Agreed. Number two, the core times when alcohol will be sold for consumption on the premises, are they agreed? Agreed. agreed. Number three, the activities, are they agreed? agreed? Agreed. And number four, the children and young persons to be permitted. Mr Coleman's made reference to that in his report as well. Is that agreed? Agreed. agreed. 
and the capacity is to, for, uh, to be 100 persons. Is that agreed? Agreed. Okay, I'm going to move that we grant this application. Is that agreed? Agreed. agreed. Thank you. Okay, Mrs. Small, that's fine. Thank you. Thank you. The application has been granted. Thank you very much. Thank you. Well, I now leave the meeting. You're free to either stay and watch the proceedings or, or, or you can leave. It's up to yourself. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> okay, the next one is Lost Orchards, the Old Steading, East Adamson Farm, Muirhead. And it's our friend, Hello? Mrs. Good, I think. Hello, it's lovely to be here again with something that isn't uh, horribly contentious. Thank you very much for getting this to this licensing board. Um, I, I'm really delighted to have been asked to deal with this matter. Uh, lost lost uh, Orchards are uh, a cidery and um, based on a farm on the very edge of Angus. They have won the World Cider Award. This is against France against South of England and everywhere else that makes cider. This is just absolutely marvellous because it didn't only put them on the map, but again, it shows how wonderful and diverse Angus is and how marvellous its people are at driving forward business and bringing people to it. It started off as a small project with a few apple trees and um, they now have dedicated quite a large part of the farm to um, planting different types of apple trees to get different types of cider. They also, I thought this was lovely because I went round to see it, they also plant, um, they also plant uh, small flowers that attract bees underneath to help with everything else, so it's very environmentally friendly. They now have nearly 500 trade customers, which is absolutely superb. The customers are across Scotland, across the UK and Firth of Scotland now, which is absolutely super. The main warehouse is based in Glasgow and it is operates under a different name. They, they, take, they have the product taken there, it's bottled there and then it's distributed from there. What they want from the farm is an ability to keep serving local people with greater ease. They usually deliver themselves. They um, agree to comply with the delivery um, guidance, which your honours have previously accepted. And very occasionally, somebody might make an order online or by telephone and collect it from the farm. The premises are covered by CCTV. They can be seen from the farmhouse. They, they're regularly passed by people working on the farm. Um, they are delightful people, and I move the grant. Thank you, Mrs. Hood. Well, it's in, uh, it's in Councillor Whiteside and I's ward, so I, I, I must go and visit it myself because I'm quite partial to a, to a nice cider. Thank you very much. Are there, are there any questions of Mrs. Hood? Councillor Moore. Thank you, convener. Yes, Mrs. Hood. Um, I was reading the description and there seems to be a contradiction between paragraph one and paragraph three. Because in paragraph one, we're told all sales will be by internet and telephone. Product may be delivered locally by makers of our postal or other delivery service with occasional collection permitted from the site. Paragraph three, trade and general public will be able to collect alcohol -like beverages from the site as and when convenient and required. Now, these two to me don't seem to gel properly. One says occasional, the other says as standard. It will be. Uh, occasional is quite difficult to, to, to deal with. They, they are not operating a shop. And if somebody, say the local shop, this has been happening with trade, the local shop may run out and they phone up or, and say, look, I need more cider. So they just drive down and collect it from the door. They've been doing this under the occasional licenses, this type of thing. Um, there is no desire whatsoever to be offering this as a normal service. It isn't on their website and it is definitely for special occasions. Yeah, the trade I can understand, but it's the and general public, which makes it seem like it's got the possibility of becoming a shop. Uh, no, because it would require to change its planning consent. This has been discussed with your planners and it is definitely a very seldom occurring incident because it's easier for a busy farmer and his wife, and they both are busy on the farm, 
to deliver uh, using their delivery van. They take deliveries out twice a week to people from there. And if they have to use other deliverers, they use DPT, uh, sorry, DPD or other people to do that. They're not anticipating this will be something that happens often, but we, I put this in because I was keen to ensure that they had an opportunity uh, should somebody want to pick up something to do so. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, anyone else? Comments? Okay, members, we have the application in front of us. And number one is obviously the description of premises. Number two, do we agree at the core times Monday to Sunday, 10 to 2200 hours? Agreed. Agreed. Number three, the activities, is that agreed? Agreed. agreed. And number four, the capacity, which will obviously vary. Is that agreed? Agreed. Okay, Mrs. Hood, I'm going to move that we grant your application, members. Is that agreed? Agreed. Thanks again, Mrs. Hood, and your application for your client has been granted. Thank you very much, convener board members. I look forward to seeing you the next time, and I hope you have a successful meeting today. Thank you very much. Thank you. Bye. 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 Okay, members, the next one is Treasures Tea Room and Boutique, 9 to 13 High Street in Arbroath. I think we've got Charlene with us. Yes, you do. There you go. <laughs> Hiya. <laughs> I was just a way to say the floor, but the screen is yours. <laughs> Thank you. <clears throat> yeah, um, so basically what it is, we've obviously applied for the premises licence. Um, it was um, originally the old chicken and spice shop. Um, and I took it over at the end of last year. And the reason we've applied for it all was we've got the tea room now. Um, we're needing it just to, ladies like to come, have a nice lunch, maybe want a nice glass of Prosecco with it. Um, it was known for that before. And all we're trying to do is kind of keep up the same standard or, well, not match sugar and spice, but kind of just give our customers that extra little bit of service that they're after. Um, try and sort of work our way through, obviously, obviously we've got the COVID situation going on, um, tea rooms are struggling in the catering industry, so it's something that um, we feel our customers want and it is a good thing to have. Um, there was, there has been sort of a few speculation regarding uh, capacity and things which has been discussed. Um, we've, out, we've decked our outside area um, for obviously the COVID reason as well to allow for those people that don't like to sit indoors. So we've had to revamp the whole place. Um, and the reason we've applied for the license is just to give, us, give our customers that extra little bit of service that they've had before. Um, we don't want to be classed as a pub or any sort of rowdy pub place. We just want to be something that's a bit more upmarket for our growth. Um, something just to sort of suit the clientele that we have. Um, we have applied for off sales as well. And it's not a case of we want to be selling 70 CL bottles of vodka, nothing like that. That is only for sort of gift sets um, around sort of Christmas time. Um, we had a huge demand from people wanting, struggling to get gifts for men in the town and wondering what to get them. And just having like a nice little set of whiskey or something like that, which we could provide our customers rather than you getting a pair of socks. <laughs> um, it's something a bit more that we find that we want to provide that service to our customers. But um, We've not applied for this to be a rowdy pub or anything like that. We want to be more upmarket, something that maybe provides a few nice cocktails and just things like, it's more just to provide the service and keep up that standard and to survive in the current times that we're in as well. Um, otherwise, it is really difficult to make a profit of anything at the minute um, with all the current guidelines with COVID. Reducing tables um, has obviously reduced the amount of people we can have in. Um, as well and you're going through a lot more cleaning processes and everything's costing a lot more um, than what it did before <laughs> so so yeah okay thank you very much um, you did mention the capacity issue can I just ask and I know it's in the LSO's report but can I just ask um, Mrs Tom that you're, you're satisfied with 110 persons remaining as it is Hi there. Um, yeah, I think we look back at history and Treasures Tea Room had previously been granted the 110 um, overall, so I'm quite happy. Okay, thank you very much. And Mr. Leeson, can, I know it's in the report, but it's just for the minute and it's being recorded, obviously. Can I just confirm again that ECP have withdrawn their objection, original objection? 
Yes, I, I confirm that that's been done. The, there was a, an original um, noise management plan submitted and it was amended and uh, we're happy with that now. Okay, thank you very much. Councillor Moore. Thank you, convener. Just one question. In the noise management plan, it refers to the doors being quiet closing, etc. Are they self-closing? They aren't self-closing, but um, they're conservatory doors, so they're not like a loud door when it shuts. Um, right, any other questions from members? Mr Coleman, do you comments? Do you have anything to add to your, again, comprehensive report? Yeah, nothing to add to the, the report, Mr Kavina. The only thing I uh, noted that was that in, on this occasion, the outdoor area was to be in addition in the capacity, not included in the overall capacity. Mm. But if both members are satisfied with that, then uh, I would have no objection. Yeah, that's that's one of the reasons I asked um, Mrs. Tom about the capacity. Yeah, but yeah she's happy with it. Councillor King. Yes, Convener. Can we just make that quite clear when we issue the license, uh, what the two capacities are, so that there's no confusion that the inside capacity is one thing and the outside capacity is another. And I can't quote them because at the moment I've got the screen up, but I think to get them I'll have to drop yeah, down to it's, it's sixty-five yeah. outdoors, Alec, and forty-five indoors. You've you, clearly got paper. Um, <laughs> I don't, I'm, trying to work, I'm trying to work off the screen. I'm and saying nothing. <laughs> right, thank you. Okay, thank you. Chair. <laughs> Councillor Fairweather, yes. Thanks, thanks, Chair. Uh, it's just a, a short comment. Delighted to see these premises uh, uh, re, re, reopened. Um, and I just want to say I wish Charlene and Moira all the best with their business. Oh, thank you. Thank you very much. And we'll, we certainly will come down and see. I used to like it when it was sugar and spice. I used to go down yeah. quite often. So. Well, there's no sweeties anymore, so don't be too disappointed. It's oh, there used to be sweeties now. in the front when we went in the door. <laughs> no, <laughs> I'd just like to say a thank you to everyone as well, because obviously there's a lot of paperwork and things involved with this sort of thing. Um, and um, Mr Fairweather and Mr Coleman and others have been very helpful um, in progressing this. So just like to say thank you for that. Mr well. Fairweather, that's a long time since he's been called Mr Fairweather. Councillor, <laughs> Councillor! <laughs> uh, hey, this is recorded, this is live. <laughs> okay, any comments from members? No? Okay. Uh, yes, convener. I mean, this is a very long established business that's just yeah. changed ownership. And we normally rattle through these with no problems at all. So I, I welcome this business uh, setting up and uh, moving into the old sugar and spice. Oh, thank you. Well, okay. you'll have to all come in for a cuppy. Yeah, we will. <laughs> Once things are a bit safer. Yeah, <laughs> you're only allowed to at a table now because you're all different households. <laughs> okay, members, we've got the, the application in front of us. Um, we've obviously got a description of premises. Two is the core times. Uh, is that agreed? Agreed. Three is the activities. Is that agreed? Agreed. Four children and young persons with the, 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 the five pieces below it. Is that agreed? Agreed. And the capacity is a total of 110, 45 indoors and 65 outdoors. Is that agreed? Agreed. Okay, I'm going to move that we grant this application. Is that agreed? Agreed. Thank you. Charlene, your application has been granted. Thank, Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. You're welcome. Now we need to figure out how to leave the meeting. We'll leave. There we go. <laughs> it's obvious. <laughs> Right, thank you. No problem, thank you. Bye. Okay, members, agenda item number five, premises licences, request to vary under the Licensing Scotland Act 2005. And the first one is Aldi's in Craigle Loch Road, Forfar, and it's Caroline Loudon, I think, that's speaking for this one. Thank you. Um, she appears to have left the meeting. She was literally here about two seconds ago, but has disconnected, possibly. Okay, John. Okay, that's fine. Well, what we'll do, we'll go on to um, the next one then, if, if she's not there, and that's 10 Cafe Bar in Castle Street in Forfar. I'm not sure if it's Mr or Mrs Hampton or both that's here, but mm -hmm. whoever's there can speak to their application now. It's Alan Hampton, convener. Okay, thank you. I think Alan's still on mute. It's on mute, yeah. Uh... 
Hello. There we go. Good morning. Good morning. How are we doing? We're fine. That, right, that, I'm, afraid, that, I'm afraid Mrs. Hampton is working this morning, so you've got the substitute stand in. <laughs> um, I'll try and put in as good a performance as I can for her. Um, as you're probably aware, we've put in an application for uh, outside um, cafe facilities at the rear of the cross. Um, something that we've wanted to do for a long time. Um, I think it's quite an iconic setting. Uh, particularly with the, the, the town hall behind. Um, one of the things we felt is that Forfar lacks that kind of central focus and that kind of central draw into the town centre. Uh, we've made the application uh, at the point of where many of these applications were being made for occasional licences for outdoor um, consumption, which the Scottish Government was promoting quite heavily at the start of the COVID pandemic. Um, we felt that we didn't want to look at putting two or three patio chairs out in the pavement. Um, wanted to do something that was in keeping with our premises, something that was quality, something that uh, was there to be, um, something that had a bit of longevity to it. Um, so we thought we'd make a proper, uh, sensible application uh, based on quality, based on longer term view than, than the current COVID pandemic and providing something that would be a genuine asset to the area that would actually want to draw people down to the centre of town and draw people in. Um, I'm aware that there's probably concerns about uh, many things to be honest but we've operated that premises now for 10 years, we've operated it lawfully and correctly and to the best of our ability and I'm, as far as I'm aware it, it does well, it does well financially, and it's never caused any problem to anybody. Um, I'm just hoping that you can maybe see the bigger picture and that uh, having a facility like that is an actual asset to the town. Um, the obvious, the, the great scenario for me would be obviously the area outside of the bar to be pedestrianised, uh, probably from Irons up to the High Street, which would negating the, the need for carrying any product over the road, but I'm aware that that's a much bigger issue. Um, but I believe that we can operate that system with a full-time member of staff actually on the, on the actual stand at, the, at all times, um, providing again another job, another piece of employment, but full monitoring of the situation. Um, other than that, as I say, it's, it's an asset, and if you guys are happy to have it, then we're happy to provide it. <coughs> if I fully understand, if that's not the case. Okay, thank you. Mr Hampton, you are aware that the Police Scotland have put in a letter of objection, which I'll ask them yes. to speak to in a minute, but before I ask <coughs> the police to speak to, to, the, to the letter, are there any questions from members at this stage? Councillor Moore. Yes, thank you. Mr Hampton, I'm looking at the plan that you've submitted and you've got all the social distancing between the tables. Yes. I'm gravely concerned that those tables are very close to the public benches and there's right. social distancing there. So I would suggest that possibly six or eight of the chairs would be unusable. I think the, the plan was prepared when the social distancing uh, levels were stated for public houses at two metres um, and that's been done to that. That's since been reduced to the one metre distance and yeah. those, those are, those were, uh, to my mind were uh, designed with the two, they were done by the architect with the two metre distance at all, all locations. Yeah, the two metres within the whole of your, the area you want. Mm -hmm. Yes. They are very close to the public benches that are currently provided. And if so, they not yeah. public bench, they could just about shake hands with some of the people at the chairs. Well, the, the distancing uh, limit has been reduced to the one metre, is it not, in the case? I would still suspect they're within one metre, but that's another matter. Yeah. How are you proposing to address the fact that your premises would be licensed, this area would be licensed, but the road in between wouldn't be? Well, the, 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 the drink would be carried over by a member of staff. It's still going from a licensed area to an unlicensed to a licensed. But 
And have you had any discussions with the council about doing this, about using this area? Uh, no. I mean, as I said, we've made the application. I'm, I'm quite clear on it. I'm, I'm aware that there's issues with it, but there's issues with everything. And uh, if it wasn't apl applied for, then I definitely wouldn't get it. Okay, thank you. Okay, yeah. Councillor Moore, uh, the next one. Councillor Whiteside. Thank you, convener. Um, hello, Mr Hampton. I've just got a couple of questions. Uh, one, I, I have got some concerns about safety, but we'll hear from the police later. Um, one of my questions is about the public access to the space. Currently, it's, it's, it's a public space. Anybody can use it. Am I right thinking that it'll only be customers up here in Bar that can access it in future? That's the first question. There's mention of street furniture having to be moved. Um, who would be responsible for doing that? Where would it go? And would there be sufficient um, pavement space for easy access for people with impaired sight, etc. cetera, um, after that? So that was, that was my main um, concern. Well, the, the area at the rear of the building is on two levels. There's a slight step in the distance uh, between the, the outer periphery and the main uh, area in the centre. We saw that as the natural break between the two areas. The street furniture, the uh, flower pots, etc., could be moved to those lower levels and I, I believe still leave adequate access. Um, we were, to, we were uh, proposing to acid wash and power wash the, the slab work on the higher area and create the, the banners and the, the posting all the way around to create an enclosed area. Okay, I, I, that's what we had a bit of concern with, whether the the remaining pavement would be a little bit too congested if the street furniture was moved down there, but we can take advice on that. Well, as I, as I say, you'll always find something that, that doesn't fit for it, but as I say, we, we believe we can make it work. I was prepared to, uh, we will move any furniture as required and do the necessary cleaning of the area as well. And did you answer my question about public access? Would it be restricted to people that were customers of the... Uh, no, it would, it would be customers, yes. I mean, you, I'm sure you can appreciate that you couldn't just allow anyone to wander in and use, use the furniture and open their own drinks and open their own food and, and you know, such like. And be out with the terms of, of, the, of the conditions of the actual licence itself by bringing in children and such like. Yeah, I, I suppose my concern is then that, that there's not another similar space available to the public in for um, it's, it's in restricting it to, to customers of your bar only. Um, that's that's the point I wanted to make. Thank you. Okay, Mr. Coleman, you've got your uh, hand up. Yes, thank you, Mr. Green. I just, um, you know, I visited this premises um, recently, and uh, Mr. Hampton and Mrs. Hampton were very cooperative, very helpful. Um, uh, I did take a video at the time. Now, sharing video by email is not very easy. However, and I can do this by screen share. I've got um, Alistair McLeod who's going to share the video so you can all see it in the, the area that, I mean, I know we're all familiar with this right behind the town and county hall, but I think it would be useful to see. So he's going to bring it up. Oh, here we go. Thank you. So this, I'm just standing outside the, the actual premises, that's the inside, so you know, we'll come across. Now, I must say, I mean, when I go across, it's, you know, I've got, I take a big stride, so you're talking 20, 30 steps to me, I mean, for other people, I might be a bit more. Um, pardon, seems to be rather jumpy, it's because we're on, online. <laughs> just coming across. Now, I mean, I'm, I was not convinced the major variation is appropriate for this, um, it is a good bit away from the premises. I would, I would have wondered if that was appropriate, a major variation as opposed to new premises. I understand that Mr Hampton was going to move these uh, <clears throat> the bins down onto the lower level and these particular the public benches wouldn't be actually be usable and the flower pots would be down onto the lower part as well. And that would be the exit. So folk would come in the way I come in and they would exit across there. It is a very busy carriageway. Um, and whilst I have... Um, yeah, I've no doubt Mr Hampton will be able to operate it well. I, I just think in terms of law, we've got to look at it in terms of law and the security public safety, which police will come to as well. I do have strong concerns as I outlined in my report. Um, I, I, I understand where the, uh, the applicants are coming from, but I just have strong concerns. We know the area well. Now, when I had to take the video, there was, I mean, when I was there, and I'm there often as well, because 
for the meetings around Madrid normally. There are medium sized lorries that come through there. There are small council trucks and bin lorries and all the rest of it that come through there. It's a frequent taxiway. Um, and I would have a strong sense for public safety in that term. Um, uh, to meet the public, uh, the licensing objectives. As you can see, a van went past this parked outside. I'm sympathetic to the idea of pedestrianising it, but indeed that's not our call. It's not something we can do, or neither is it pedestrianised. And indeed, I also understand the Christmas tree goes up there once a year, um, which the applicant has agreed to be, the capacity would be reduced if that you know, when it goes up. But indeed, I still would question if that's appropriate, if this is an appropriate premises to be selling alcohol. In terms of leaving a licensed premises to go into another one, it, when it's crossing the road, there's no sale, there's no consumption. It, uh, that could be up for debate if that's actually an issue. It's in terms of where the actual sale takes place, well, he's, Mr. Hampton said there'll be a Bluetooth system. Um, so the sale would take place in the licensed areas, but there'll be no consumption or sale crossing the road. Um, but really, it's the crossing the road that's the big concern. Um, for me, members of staff are public, public safety, securing public safety. Um, and also, there are, you know, there are no children there, uh, no children permitted in the premises, and there's no proposal to let children into this uh, extension either. Uh, given that it's a public area, people may well run in, children may well run in if they see somebody they know, and then it can get a bit out of hand, I think. Uh, so, I, um, I do have that my main objection to it would be the licensed objective of. Uh, securing public safety. I, I do sympathise with the applicant, but I just struggle to conclude that it would be uh, meeting that the law in terms of what we have. I hope the video will help, despite it being a little bit jumpy. But as I said, we all know the area quite well. It is, it is busy, very busy. It's a main, main, main route okay. in, in Forfa. Thank, thank you, Mr. Coleman. Councillor Durno. Uh, I, I do sympathise with uh, the applicant because I, I sort of know where he's coming from. He wants a sort of cafe, outdoor bar area like what you have in various other towns, you know, down south or whatever. But I, I just don't think it's going to work in this area. I mean, myself, I, I've seen me go into the, the local bakers and get a bacon roll and sit outside in the seat. And, and then you're kind of stopping people from doing that if you're going to have other people there drinking and it's just going to be a kind of private area. Um, and it's too near the road as well, and and you maybe have somebody that has maybe a bit too much to drink, and and before they know it, they're in front of a van or something. It's I just do think it's too dangerous, and um, maybe if, as you say, if the street had been closed off, that would have been fine. If it had been pedestrianised, you could have had it, and you could have maybe a covering over in it, and you could get a really nice outside atmosphere. But I think in a cold day in Forfar, when it's icy and sloppy, and you're going to have folks sitting outside drinking beer, I really don't think it's going to work. Sorry. <laughs> Councillor King. Yes, convener. <clears throat> Did I pick it up correctly that uh, the applicant has not yet applied to Angus Council to negotiate a lease for this piece of ground? That's correct, yes. Thank you. Okay, uh, anyone else questions before I ask the police to speak to their letter? No, okay. Police Scotland, would you like to speak to your letter, please? Hello, can everyone hear me? Yes, we can, Robin. Yeah. Hi, sorry. Um, I was trying to mute myself and it talks over you there, so I was trying to no, unmute myself. Right. Good morning, everybody. Um, we, a lot of what we're going to say has already been raised. We have obviously submitted our letter of objection. We are, as, as Mr Coleman said, really sympathetic to this application. We understand that these are unprecedented times and it's very difficult for hospitality owners um, and indeed any business owner really to remain financially viable whilst ensuring they operate safely and responsibly. Um, however, uh, we are of the opinion that granting this variation would breach the licensing objective of securing public safety and for this reason we cannot support the application. Um, we know, we all know Castle Street is a really busy road in the centre of Forfar. There's a lot of on-street parking. We have concerns um, that people will be crossing the roads and they may be hidden behind parked cars, not um, immediately visible to oncoming traffic. Uh, we also understand the applicant um, has stated to Mr Coleman that it will only be staff, but again, like Mr Coleman, we agree that staff are public and their safety has to be paramount. 
Um, again, I think it was mentioned about uh, people that are under the influence possibly staggering out and on the road in front of a car. That's another concern that we have. And kind of ultimately, we feel the risk to the patrons and the staff is too great. And we do recommend that the application be refused. And um, I did a bit of research on our systems, and um, I can tell you that from 1999, which I appreciate a long time ago, until 2018, which is when our system, we, we stopped recording that way, there were 156 road traffic accidents reported to the police. And bear in mind, a lot of them are not reported on Castle Street. And there was one, the last one involving a pedestrian was in 2018. So it is not uncommon for this to happen. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Any questions for the police from members? No. Okay. Comments? Chair. Yes, Councillor Fairweather. Thank you, Chair. Um, I can certainly understand the, uh, the concerns. Um, but I'm quite sure that any issues uh, Mr. Hampton and, or Mrs. Hampton can take up with uh, can take up with the council uh, and uh, and get th get those agreed. Um, it certainly, uh, well, to me, um, it can be it could be it could be monitored, and if there are problems, we could easily uh, withdraw a license. Uh, and I do, uh, and I do think at this time, when you you, you look at other. Other towns and cities uh, that uh, um, have this type might have this type of uh, um, thing out, right outside. Basically, I, I think they're terrific, and I think it's a, it's a terrific idea. On seeing that, and uh, there was one in our growth um, which initially I was against, and that was uh, that, and that was at Weatherspoons. Uh, and as it turns out, um, there are no problems with that, and right, and, it, right, and it works right, and it works very well. I think anything we can do tonight to help businesses uh, in these difficult times, um, right, we should be doing that. Thank you, Chair. Thank you. Councillor Moore. Thank you, Convener. Well, I appreciate the initiative of the applicant and I can see that it could have been if it weren't there. If it were outside the old Clydesdale building where you walk down the pavement, there'd be less risk. Crossing the road, I'm concerned. I think that the layout will lead to problems. There's too many issues that still need to be addressed, both licensing and civil. I think at the moment, it does not promote the licensing objective of securing public safety or of preventing public nuisance. And therefore, I am going to move that this is refused. Thank you, Councillor Moore. Councillor King, and then Councillor yeah. Yes, thank you, Convener. Um, I must admit, I agree with Councillor Moore. I've looked at this one very, very carefully, and I find it's an application too far. Uh, Councillor Fairweather speaks about how these sort of things working uh, in other places, and particularly said uh, Weatherspoons and Arbroath. But the outdoor area at Weatherspoons is immediately adjacent to the premises. And I cannot think of anywhere that I have seen where uh, an outdoor drinking area is across a busy road from the premises. And that is the key to this particular one, that you have to cross the arm of Castle Street, which is extremely busy, as you well know. And, you know, you said largest trucks. Let's be honest about it. You get full-sized HGVs going up and down there, creating all sorts of difficulties for other motorists getting past and getting parked. I think that this, uh, while it's um, an admirable attempt to increase the gentleman's business, is just the wrong thing in the wrong place. And I agree with Councillor Moore, it's uh, against the promotion of public safety and also the, the, the reduction of public nuisance. So I'm happy to second Councillor Moore. Thank you, Councillor King. Councillor Durno and then Councillor Brown. I just want to apologise for the interruptions I keep getting, people banging on my door, etc. Um, <laughs> I uh, totally echo what Councillor King says. The difference in the Witherspoons and our brothers is not next to the road. You can you can walk, you can sit down, you can park a, a pram or a buggy or a scooter or whatever. Uh, if you have um, persons that are wheelchair bound or one of these motorised scooters, 
and and they're they're in that vicinity um in there's cars and there's people bringing drinks across etc it's going to be a wee bit chaotic and uh, I, I just I know the idea of what they're doing and and it's really difficult for businesses just now but I, I don't know if they would be actually looking at this if we didn't have the COVID regulations in place as well it's making things difficult for publicans just now um, so I, I, I'm not approving this application sorry. Thank you Councillor Durno. Councillor Brown. I think it's a fantastic idea um, although at this present moment I don't think uh, it would be viable I, as Mr. Uh, um, Hampton spoke about the possibility of an area that bull knows being, being uh, pedestrianised at some time, it has been spoken about before, and uh, if, if that was to happen, it would be ideal. Mm. Thank you, Councillor Brown. Councillor Whiteside? Thanks, Convener. I was actually going to say something very similar. I think. Um, We've got a duty to heed the advice of the police and the licensing standard, standards officer, but this is a license application that could be revisited if and when the area is pedestrianised. And I do think there's a bit of um, popularity in that idea within Forfer, so we may see this come back at some time in the future. Okay, thank you. Um, that's kind of a, a mixed view here, isn't it, today? It's not an obvious one. Um, like Councillor Fairweather, I, I, I don't have a great issue with it. I, I can see what the, exactly what the police are saying about people crossing the road, uh, staff and things like that. But you could say the same when you come out licensed premises yourself and, and, and others. We've all got to cross the road. Um, and I think it's, a, it's an excellent idea. Um, however, it's, it's, it's not my decision, members. It's, it's, it's for this board. Um, Mr Hampton, would you like to come back on anything before we we move what we're going to do? Um, well, just a couple of points. Uh, one that Councillor King made about it to develop our business, I can assure you I'm not going to be a millionaire out of selling cups of coffee to half a dozen people at the back of the cross. It's a community project. Um, if we make something great, there's a fairly significant outlay. And as I said earlier, that's why I didn't want to throw you know, half a dozen white plastic chairs out the back there. It would be done properly and it would be done right. But I fully understand that there is issues with it. But like all good things, you know, it's easy to find reasons not to do something. But it takes a bit more to go the, the extra mile and get something done. Thank you. But I do thank you for your considerations. Okay, thank you. Any other comments from members? Okay, well, I think there's going to be a, a, possibly a vote here because I'm going to move um, that we grant this application if, if I have a seconder. I'll second. Okay, any amendments? Um, sorry, convener, um, I've already got a, a motion by um, Councillor Moore, seconded by Councillor King, so this would be an amendment. Okay, that will, um, we'll, I'll change it to an amendment then, Mrs Anderson, my apologies. Would the uh, granting of the application that you are moving, Councillor um, Fotheringham, would that be in addition to the additional conditions laid out in the LSOs. Yes, with all the conditions of it from Mr. Coleman. Mrs. Kimmett. Greener, sorry if you can't see me. I'm hoping you can hear me. I'm having connection issues at the moment. Yes, we can hear you. It's fine. No problem, Lindsay. On you go. Yeah, it just in relation to if, if this application is granted, it is worth highlighting that they haven't obtained the consent from the Roads Authority to use the area. So any grant of that area would need to be subject to that and can be used before that was obtained. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, Mrs Anderson. Okay, committee. Um, we've got a motion which was moved by Councillor Moore, seconded by Councillor King, in that we refuse uh, the variation application for 10 cafe bar on the grounds that it is inconsistent with the licensing objectives of securing public safety and public nuisance. So that is the motion. The amendment moved by Councillor Fotheringham, seconded by Councillor Fairweather, is that we grant the variation application for 10 Cafe Bar, subject to the conditions by Environmental and Consumer Protection 
and the additional conditions by the LSO officer. So we're voting for motion and amendment. Convener? Amendment. Councillor Moore? Motion. Councillor Boyd? Motion. Councillor Brown? Amendment. Councillor Durno? Motion. Councillor Fairweather? Amendment. Councillor King? You need to unmute Councillor King. Councillor King? Oh. I, I'm, I'm voting for the motion. Councillor Lumgear? Motion. And Councillor Whiteside? Motion. That's six for the motion and three for the amendment. Therefore, the application is refused. Okay, Mr. Hampton, um, you've obviously heard the, the, the result of the, the vote um, that the application at this time um, has been refused. So, so thank you for your for your time today. Thank you. No problem. Please. Thanks very much for the consideration. All the best. Thank you. Thank Goodbye. you. Okay, um, Ali is um, the the Aldi's representative back yeah, in. Yeah, Carolyn Loudon's back on. She's back on. Okay, so we'll go. Apologies. To... No, 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 that's no. okay. Sometimes we have we have um, connection issues, Caroline. That's not a problem. Okay, you okay. can um, speak to the the Aldi application now, please. Thank you, and I'm going to leave my video off because I think it's possibly linked yeah. at my end as well. So yeah, I just just do a verbal submission if you don't mind. Yes, this is an application on behalf of Aldi Stores, and I must also offer apologies. My client was due to come and attend with me this morning, um, but he's been called to uh, on site in Stonehaven, so he wasn't able to attend. So I let, let your team know in, in advance. But this is an extension of the Aldi Four for Store, um, really a huge success story, and the client is, is going to undertake some works which are, which are ongoing. So essentially a warehouse which was used to the back of the store is becoming part of the shop floor um, and there'll be an increased shop area at the rear, more tills. And we're using this opportunity to essentially move the alcohol area to the rear of the store and it's all being upgraded. So there's um, a modernization program going on at the same time as this extension where the store will become brighter, much more user friendly in, in essence. And the display mechanism, it's um, quite thick display shelving units that go in now for the alcohol area. And they've got things like pull out baskets, which they'll store some cans and other produce or alcoholic produce in. So all in all, the, the, kind of, the look of the, the, the area is much, much nicer um, for, for the shoppers, essentially. So we're just taking this opportunity to do the extension and the, and the upgrade to the store in one. Um, we have at the moment 22.5 metres square permanent display with an, a seasonal offering as well. So this means that Aldi is very much, as, as you will know, if you shop there, you know, they, they don't bank space. They, they want to be entirely on point with their pricing and with their space usage and how everything works. It's the, the modus operandi is efficiency. But if we have the 22.5 plus the 9 metres square giving us an overall a capacity of 31.5 at December time. We're currently seeking 32.9, I can't believe I'm writing, 91466 meters, meters square. So if you take the, the overall capacity of 31.5 and our new capacity saw 32.9, there's not a huge increase there. And it really is to do with this better way of, of layout of the alcohol area itself. Um, I think that's probably all I have at the moment. I'll rest there, but of course I'm here to answer any questions um, that your honours might have. Okay, th thank you very much. Any questions for Ms Loudon? Councillor Moore. Thank you, convener. Looking at the floor plan, as I understand it, the tills are at the bottom of the plan and the alcohol area which I must admit is absolutely brilliant, determined down to the last square millimetre, is right at the other end of the store. How are you going to monitor it? Yes, no, this is, this is a key point. 
There's these, this particular, we call it Project Fresh, has been rolled out across key stores across Scotland. And this question has come up at other boards, as you can imagine. And essentially, it's, it's monitored by staff. So our staff, we have more staff on the floor going round and, and watching people. We've got excellent CCTV as well at the back of store. Um, and it just allows those, I think if, if you've ever been to an Aldi till, I, mean, I cannot get the things on the line quickly enough before they're coming through the other end. Again, it's extremely efficient and fast. In fact, I think they probably time themselves. So it allows those people that are being till assistants to concentrate on that and our store managers and other staff go around and we'll, we'll keep a, a close eye on this, absolutely. Um, obviously, theft from the store, all these kind of things, the security aspect are incredibly important for us. Um, and we, we, we have to keep a close eye. That's, that's it. If you're involved in the sale of alcohol, that's, that's, you need to be on top of it all of the time. Thank you. Anyone else? Um, can I just ask um, Mrs. Tom, the building warrant, um, how are the works progressing? Is there, has there been a completion certificate yet? Uh, no convener. The, the works are still underway, so there would have to be a completion certificate in place before, obviously, it could be used. Okay, thank you very much. Okay, members, comments? No comments? Okay, well, we've got the description of the variation in front of us. It's quite a, quite a short one, um, so you've got, you have it there. Um, description of the variation one, two, and three, and I'm going to move that we grant this. Is that agreed? Indeed. Okay, Miss Loudon, that your client's Indeed. application has been granted. Thank you very much. No, thank you all very much this morning. It's been a, a pleasure to to take part and and also very interesting to to hear the other applications coming forward. So thank you very much indeed to you all. Oh, you're welcome. Thank you. Enjoy. Thank you. Thank you. Take care. Bye. Bye. Okay. Um, the Arbroath United Cricket Club now, um, and we've got Gary Burnett here. Good morning. Okay, Gary, you can speak to your application if you wish, just like the rest have done. Hello, can you hear me? Yes, we can. Yes, thank you. If you just want to speak to your application so the members know, we've obviously got... Hi, can you hear me? Yes, we can. Yes. We have connection problems. I can't hear you. All right, dear. <laughs> Do you want to describe what, the, what we're applying for? Yes, please. Yeah. It's an outdoor area at the kit club, Arbroath United. That's just so people sit outside and watch the cricket, which is actually finished at the moment now. But just so people can sit outside, wearing, it would be at the latest nine o'clock, no music, nothing like that. It's just people can sit outside and watch the cricket. Okay, thank you. Questions, members? Comments? Okay, it's very simple, I think. Oh, sorry, Councillor King and then Councillor Moore. Yes, convener. This is a very small addition to the um, existing uh, area that they use. I think it's on the veranda at the moment outside the cricket club. It's a small extension on the grass. It's only going to be used when they're actually playing cricket. I don't see any problems with this at all. No, no neither do I, Councillor King. Thank you, Councillor Moore. Yes, convener. I have no problem with it whatsoever. Oh. I'm just surprised that it's not being able to be dealt with on delegated because it is so minor. Mr Coleman, can you answer that one? Or Mrs Kimmett, sorry. It, yes, um, an, an additional activity um, has to be done by way of a major variation, which would have to come to the board. It can be dealt with by a minor variation. Okay, thank you. Okay, well, as Councillor King says, this is a very simple variation, although it has to come to us. So I'm just going to move that we grant this. Is that agreed? Maybe. Thank you very much. Mr. Burnett, if you can hear us, that the, your application has been granted. No, it's maybe not. No. I'm sorry, we went connect problems. We can't hear you. Give him a thumbs up. <laughs> yes, we'll give him the thumbs up. Oh, it's been thumbs up, then, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, thank you very much. Thank you. Okay. 
And the final one on agenda item number five is the Lochside Bar in Montrose. Uh, Mrs Kimmett, please. Yes, convener. Um, Police Scotland have indicated to the clerk that they are seeking a deferral in relation to this matter and also items seven and eight on the agenda, namely the premises and personal licence reviews relevant to Lochside Bar. If the licence holders are represented by Anne McEwen of Florentines in relation to all three of these matters, and she's indicated that her client is agreeable to such a deferral being granted. Um, the reason for the request from Police Scotland relates to further alleged incidents on the premises and the need for Police Scotland to submit a supplementary letter in relation to their original review application. Um, the alleged incidents are noted to be similar, so their view is it would be important to look at these as a whole and Miss McEwen's in agreement with that. Um, we've not had the letter from Police Scotland yet and Miss McEwen has also submitted a volume of late documentation, so there needs to be further time for everyone to have fair notice and for the board to consider that in full. So given that both parties are agreeable and that there is late documentation, it'd be my advice that the board defers matters until a later date um, and officers are looking at identifying a date for a special board given that there is so much information um, regarding this premises and looking to set that in October. Okay, thank you very much. Yes, well, I'm quite happy to support the police request and um, Ms McEwen. So, members, in light of the police wishing to submit additional information in connection with the log sidebar, and the agent Anne McEwen also, also wishing to submit additional info, I move that we defer items 5D, 7 and 8 on this agenda to a future meeting of the board or a special meeting of this board. Is that agreed? Okay, thank you very much. At this point, Ali, could you stop recording? Recording, Ali, could we be going on to um, item nine? Right, that's resumed. Okay, thank you, Ali. Um, at members agenda item number nine is a review of bylaws, and we have report 57, I believe, 20 by the clerk in front of us. Any comments? No. Okay, we have the recommendations in front of us, and it is recommended that we note, note, the first two and establish a working group comprising four members of the board, a representative from Police Scotland, our licensing standards officer and one of the deputy clerks to the licensing board. So, who's volunteering to go on this? Well, there's not hands up. I would. I'm I would move you go on this committee, convener. Uh, well, I'll move you come on as well then. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yes, I'll go on. I'll join you. Councillor King? Yeah, I'll volunteer. Okay, Sorry. thank you. Councillor Lungair, have you accepted? No, I have not accepted. <laughs> I will accept. But you will, so that's the four. So, was it Council? Who was the. Convener, Vice Convener, um, Councillor King, and Councillor Lungair. That's what he gets for proposing me. <laughs> Okay, and then we've got, if, if such a working group is established, note that the group will consider the consultation responses in detail, carry out further consultation with all elected members and report back to the board between November 2020 and December 2020. Is that agreed? Agreed. Thank you very much. Next one, agenda item number 10 is um, a COVID-19 update, and it's a report by the clerk. Any comments? I would just like to say that there's been a huge amount of work, not done on this report, but by the, the whole licensing team, the whole every employee of this council during this, this um, pandemic. But I have had numerous emails and phone calls, some of them I've passed to our uh, chief executive and, and our head of, of, of legal and the individual people themselves from, from um, licensees, from, from lawyers, legal firms, just thanking the efficient work that the licensing team has done in very difficult circumstances. So I think on behalf of the board, I would like to thank you all and, and, and the members that are not here. Mrs. Anderson, if you can minute that and um, just so that it's, it's recorded our appreciation for the work that they have done during this pandemic. So members, we've got the recommendations. Do we agree to note this report? Yep. Agreed. Okay, thank you. The next one is agenda item number 11 and it's the an annual functions report. 
Any comments? No. Do we agree to note? Yes. Um, oh, sorry, Councillor Moore. As convener, I think that we ought to thank the officers for producing this. I am absolutely staggered that we have to produce something of this detail and yet all the reports that come to us can be as vague as they want to be. And I think our staff have done a magnificent job over the last year to pull all this together and to get it produced in a format that is easy to understand. I just think that they're wonderful and our staff. I think that they, they are magnificent. Okay, thank you, Councillor Moore. Anyone else? No, okay, so the recommendation is that we note this report. Is that noted? Agreed. Thank you very much. Agenda item number 12 is a list of the occasional licenses <laughs> granted under delegated approvals. Do we agree to note? Agreed. Thank you. Agenda item number 13, premises licenses minor variations granted under delegated approval. Do we agree to note? Agreed. Thank you. And the final one, agenda item number 14, personal licenses granted under delegate approval. Do we agree to note that? Indeed. Thank Indeed. you very much. And that's the end of the board. And thank you to um, Mrs. Tom, Mr. Eason, and our colleagues from Police Scotland and the um, IT people that have hosted this today. Thank you very much. Okay. Councillor King. Yes, can we have five minutes recess while we swap uh, um, bits on drawboard? Absolutely, not a problem, Councillor King. You know, what I'll do just now is I'll suspend, uh, pause the meeting and I'll just resume it when we go to the next one. Right, that's fine. Okay. Okay, good morning again, everyone, and welcome to this meeting of the Civic Licensing Committee. Um, Mrs Anderson, are there any apologies for absence, please? Yes, convener, there's apologies from Councillor Nicholl. Okay, thank you. Any declarations of interest? No. Okay, members, we have before us the minutes of this meeting of the 13th of August 2020. Do we agree that they're a correct record? Indeed. Thank you. Agenda item number four is report number 23220 by the Director of Legal Services. And we are asked to note the licenses granted renewed under delegated authority as detailed in the attached appendix. Do we agree to note? Yes. Thank you very much. Agenda item number five is the COVID-19 update report, and it's by the Director of Legal and Democratic Services. And again, we are asked to note. Do we agree to note? Yes. Thank you. And agenda item number six is the possible exclusion of the public and press. Do we agree to exclude the public and press if there's any here? Is that agreed? Agreed. Okay. Thank you very much. Now, I believe now, Mrs. Anderson, are we moving to another link? Okay, so Ali, if we stop recording.